Um, now I'll call um, Thais, Amanda and Joao to join us uh, at the stage. Uh, they will talk about their collaboration with, um, um, sorry, uh, with professors from six Brazilian universities and the National Institute uh, for Occupational Safety and uh, Health, uh, part of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the World he Health Organization. Um, they actually coordinated with them working um, and and uh, improving and increasing the content on uh, health and uh, hearing. Uh, and they will show uh, their project with us and uh, experience. Yeah. Okay, then uh, hello everyone. And uh, this presentation is called Campaigning for Hearing Health Through Wikimedia and Education. This is Thais Morata. She is a senior researcher at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Joan Alexandre Peshansky from the Wikipedia and Education User Group. And I, Education Scientific Dissemination Manager at Wik Movement Brazil. We three, we three are also voluntary members of user group Wik Movement Brazil. The work we are presenting today have support of FAPESP, the Sao Paulo Research Foundation. Um, before presenting, it is important to mention all the people involved in the project. There are six Brazilian universities, one Canadian, and several organizations and entities related as collaborators, as Shelley Shada from the World Health Organization and Wikimedia User Group Wikimovement Brazil. Hello, everybody. So I'm going to describe this strategy, which became much bigger than I first anticipated. And, it was, and it's not this big because I, it was a great plan. It was because I didn't know where I was going. <laughs> and so I tried very many different things. And in the end, we were able to bring these different things together. So uh, as you mentioned, I work for uh, the Centers for Disease Control. We are a public health agency. And we are dealing. Um, with a public health issue that is hearing loss. It's a very serious issue and affects many people and across the world, developing countries or um, first world countries, they, uh, people who have a hearing loss in general wait seven years to seek help. And that's, that's a big problem. So sharing information can change the scenario. Um, so in our strategy, so we had this goal to improve knowledge regarding hearing loss. We had connections with different affiliates, in the case of Brazil, the Wiki Movimento Brasil, but also other Wikipedia projects. We used the technical infrastructure provided by um, the outreach dashboard and also Wiki Education. We also incorporated the creation of online free courses, open access. We published in scientific, because most of the partners are scientists and there is a pressure to publish in the peer review literature. So we reported what we were doing in the peer review literature, but also used other environments like blogs, newsletters to disseminate what we were doing. So yeah, to start, so again, that's my story, but it, you, it could start from any point. I am here at the, a research institution. So, and we have many connections with academia, professional associations, and other key constituents like the World Health Organization. So because of this connection with professional organization, in 2015, I took a training about Wikipedia by James Hailman from the Wiki Project Medicine, and I was I, w I was sold, I really wanted to do this, but at the same time, as enthusiastic as I was, I was feeling overwhelmed. There's so much to do. And James is great, he said, no, you don't have to do everything, you take baby steps, you, you make a group, and, and so forth. So then I used the existing partnerships that we have. Partnerships that in many cases only exist in paper. It depends of somebody 
taking action, taking a step, making connections to make something of these connections. So we have partners um, in professional associations and we started doing events at their conferences, training events. We have partners in academia. And remember, I took the training in 2015. 2016 were the year of science by WikiEDU. So I contacted some partners, university professors, to use the WikiEDU platform in teaching in assign, assigning students to do Wikipedia work. Also, we decided, we started with small events, but decided we could do bigger events with our uh, partners. And of course, in the meantime, we were connecting with these Wikipedia projects, with WikiEDU and other groups, sometimes customer groups, sometimes groups of parents, of um, uh, different non-governmental organizations that have the same interest that you do. So our example is a strategy regarding hearing and audiology, but this strategy is applicable to any topic, environment, um, transportation, whatever it is, this is a and you don't have to be here, you can be in any of these locations to try to, to uh, increase your network. And we took this approach again, not knowing exactly where we are going, but um, we started, my, my organization has a Wikipedian in residence, so we, we received training to improve Wikipedia articles, also contribute to strategic planning, recruiting these partners, coordinating these trainings and events and classroom, um, connecting with Wikipedia thematic projects. And um, we started small again, organizing events, an open house at our place, inviting the community to come and spend the afternoon with us. And we had this, these elements to connect with these wiki projects. We did this event, we started small in-house, just open houses, come on, come and spend the afternoon with us doing um, Wikipedia editing. And then uh, it grew larger as, I think, Juan. Oh no, this is the last one. We also, in getting to know the Wikipedia ecosystem, we learned about um, Wikiversity and we are putting content related to the practice of audiology across countries in Wikiversity. This is still under development, but also to make it easier for countries who have the same interest to connect and collaborate. And one thing that I think, uh, besides the importance of networking, as Thais was saying, another element that is really important, a cornerstone of the work we've done is the existence of a technical infrastructure, which is for us the programs and events dashboard. This is infrastructure that allowed us to track editing coming from seven universities across the globe on a worldwide campaign. It's a technology that provided to the foundation that is funding this work, the metric that we need to justify the grant that we've received and that led to the continuation of this work. This is also the technical infrastructure that gives us a sense of belonging. Because you can imagine you have an editaton in a small town in Brazil, another one in Canada, another one in northeastern Brazil, then we had one in Switzerland. What brings these people together? How do you give them a sense that they are editing together? And one really important part of this work has been the dashboard. So this is the very early programs that were supported by Wikidu uh, in North America, that to some extent were the prehistory, the prehistory of the work uh, that came to evolve. So this brings us back to 2016, when it emerged in the University of Cincinnati uh, with Thais directly. Then we had other uh, North American universities the dashboard, I don't know if you're using it, but if you're not, you should, gives you the content that is being created, the number of editors, then you can see the editor contribution individually, and especially, and this is the power of what we're doing, the number of views. You can move. Then this project 
grew, it evolved, it became, as I was saying, a multi-institutional program, multi-country program. This is now the global dashboard that provides the same metrics, but now applying to each one of the institutions that are being, uh, come on, that are being uh, connected, including the World Health Organization that is contributing content. They have like 249 uh, editors connected to this campaign. And this, again, is the infrastructure that we needed to make sure that we are running together. And of course, can I make one comment? Sure. So one comment, that as you can see, we have different institutions from universities to the World Health Organization to a global coalition of parents of children who are deaf or hard of hearing. So representatives of, of the community too. It's not only restricted to academia. That's why when we try to expand the network to include all these different partners. Sorry, thank you, Joan. Another element, and I think this is a take-home message from this presentation for you who are thinking about doing campaigning through education, is that the topic for impact that you choose, in our case, uh, audiology, as Thais was saying, a public health issue, also leads to emergence of a shared identity. And we've been working around this shared identity throughout the year, so starting in 2019, but up to 2023, in which this leads to an emerging digital activism around this campaigning. So you are moving to an individual who, ha who had a good idea and who is here with us today, to a whole collective action strategy, technical infrastructure, a campaign with identity, with impact, connection with global partners, different social stakeholders. And to, for us in Brazil now, giving our specific project, we were able through the leadership of a professor called uh, Lilian Jacob to establish uh, a proposal to get local funding for this project and be in a, in a situation in which our affiliate is able to support this coalition of six universities in Brazil, one in Canada, that have joined together to improve content with their students on public health, uh, on audiology as public health. And this is bringing this project to a different scale, a different level, as not only it was now part of an activist element, but it became really an institutionalized uh, process. And the dashboard again, and the, ident uh, the identity that was, that was built through the campaigning became really fundamental for us to report to this funding agency. And you can uh, see the, come on, see the uh, links of the reference because I really think that the project that we've built is a project that can be uh, replicated in different contexts, on different topics, because it's the same idea. It's just understanding how you launch this kind of strategies. You are next. And so, again, when we do these global campaigns, and also some of it happened during COVID, mostly it's online. We create a page with tutorials, with suggestions, with suggestions of pages for people to edit and so forth. But in this time, so we did, as he mentioned, three campaigns. Wiki for World Hearing Day 19, Year of Sound 2020, and the 2023 one, right? So in the 2023 one, the, the Brazilian project with the universities was already happening. And the students were, were editing Wikipedia for their grade and also expected to join the campaign. And you can see at the end of the campaign how, so edits happen in several languages, French, Mandarin, these are the top languages that were edits, there are some more. But you can see the, the great, the highest percentage of edits were done by the Brazilian uh, participants in the um, educational programs. So the, really tying the two things, a campaign with the educational program has, brings great results. Because also, um, now it's not so bad, but initially when we approached 
universities to, to use this program, there was kind of skepticism. They were not sure. Of course, as the semester goes, they get very excited, but in the beginning there is resistance. When they are part of something bigger, they see the context, they see the importance. It's much easier to recruit other participation. So the, the basic, the bottom line is educational programs help campaigns and campaigns help educational programs. And so, as you can see, this is the final workshop, the closing of the Wiki for World Hearing Day campaign. This was the group attending. We had several volunteers. And you can see, you know, if Beyonce were, was to ask who ran this world, we could say girls. That's another, you know, we didn't we'd set up to do that, but we know that Wikipedia wants more women editors. And because of the nature of audiology and hearing care, we attract um, a lot of women editors. And now I think... So, uh, in a large country like Brazil, training in education and hearing health are critical for facilitating remote and virtual audiological interventions. Wikiversity enables the hosting of MOOC, massive open online courses that may mitigate health instructions inequity. This is a work in progress made by several hands that is going to help improve hearing health information. So we are creating this uh, innovative technological system at Wikiversity. With this experience, we have learned that Wikiversity can be a powerful venue for creating courses like that in many other knowledge areas. Since initiatives like this one involve other levels of institutionalization, it is important to have a previous planning to be able to coordinate all the stakeholders. The process of building and developing the course's information architecture also needs to be anticipated and planned. That said, we can definitely say Wikiversity has everything we need to create and institu institutionalize courses of any area of expertise. The project has also been systematically documented by presentations in conference and peer-reviewed academic journals publications, such as this few. And um, it was also published in other venues like DIFF, blogs, and websites. Besides documenting the project, it also helped to publicize it and legitimate it through academic and educational lenses. Now it's short. And uh, talking about reaching next levels, I think it's really important when we are thinking about this community to understand that we can't reach the global level. So this is a process that we are telling that started in the US, uh, in Cincinnati specifically, that moved uh, to Brazil that is reaching now Canada, Switzerland. But through the World Health Organization, we understand that there is the possibility of reaching the global, uh, global impact. And we are very happy that this process that has actually led to bringing the World Health Organization, uh, at least in the, in the team that works with uh, audiology, closer to the Wikimedia movement and closer to establishing a partnership that could eventually benefit each one of us, each one of our programs, each one of our uh, volunteers. To provide some uh, conclusions and take home message from, from what we are presenting, and we are not necessarily just telling the story of what we've done, but also trying to establish an abstract or more abstract understanding of how we could do it, all of us. It started with understanding our environment, our strategic environment. <laughs> Talking about audiology, <laughs> here we are. <laughs> so we could, you could. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so it's a really interesting aspect of the work we've done is to understand that each one of the institutions we work have their own missions and that we can create an alignment that leads to networking. We all, we've also understood that through this networking, 
we are establishing, as Thais was saying, a new layer of motivation. Like for a Wikimedia, you are working with the university and the World Health, World Health Organization. So this sense of belonging is actually establishing a different level of motivation for the individual contributors, independent on the institutions that they are affiliated with. Uh, we've also learned from this process that Wikimedia, Wikimedia and affiliates are actually a backbone support element for this kind of campaign work whenever you reach to them. So I'm speaking here on behalf of an affiliate. And affiliates, their mission is to provide the support that is needed for this kind of work. Another learning point that we have established is the relevance and the need of, for improvement on the, our technical infrastructure. Because we need to track edits, we need metrics, and we need to establish connection between, between um, stakeholders that are scattered around the globe for this kind of structure. We've also learned, and this was the painful learning, on how to develop local fundraising strategy. Because this is not being supported by uh, funding from the Wikimedia movement. We've reached, through the university, a different kind of funding. So, when you broaden the scope of partnership, you are actually able to reach new strategies for fundraising. Uh, we've also learned the importance of systematic do documentation, which we've done through research papers, but also through uh, popular news or blog posts or social media. Because whenever you are doing stuff, it's as important to actually do the process, but also to share the process. Because this will lead different stakeholders to actually join you in the network. So this is something that we've learned and we wanted to share. And I think we have some final slides. Thank you. Do you have questions? Thank you so much for sharing and congratulations on these accomplishments. Uh, how is, the, uh, is uh, running your MOOC? That's my specific question. Is the material online and is there online live sessions or is just the material a self-paced course? Describe a little bit this MOOC. Okay, so it's a work in progress too. And um, the material is being built by the, the professors of the seven universities that are part of the program, the project. And um, it is all built in the Wikiversity and it has a prototype that is uh, available in English, and it was it has been already translated into Portuguese, and we adapted it, and it's going to be ready for everyone that uh, wants to use. And we all also want to documentate all this process of uh, adapting and making the change uh, in the Lua code, and uh, so. Soon enough, I think you'll be able to translate it to any language that you may want. Okay. Thank you. But also, it has lessons, it has short videos and materials, resources and quizzes, tests for, for everybody. We understand this is not really, it will not give anybody a degree, but we'll give the information. Um, I have a question. It's um, uh, maybe I'll say it very simply, and then if it doesn't make sense, I can explain where I'm coming from. But um, do you would you say uh, this work is in some way? How is it connected to knowledge equity? I, I think it's all part of the, this. Fits in the open. Uh, knowledge, open science. Um, I, I mentioned in the beginning of the presentation that it takes seven years for somebody who has 
we realize is not hearing le really well to seek care. There are many factors, but because this happens in every country, it happens in Brazil, it happens in South Africa, in Switzerland, in the US, why is it? And we think, of course, there are several factors, um, uh, prejudice against people with hearing loss or other things, but I think the lack of information is a big one. And most of the time, scientists like me, we go to our conferences, we talk to our peers, we publish in peer-reviewed journals, and we expect in this ivory tower for the public to come and get the information. That doesn't work. Today, nowadays, we have other means to use plain language to, to reach the population who needs this information. So I think it's, it fits all the wiki the Wikimedia activities fits beautifully in the open resource, open knowledge, um, bigger movement. I think it's, and I think in related to health, as the CDC says, having information in plain language makes it easier, not only to understand, but to use and put health information in practice. So you make informed decisions. I think, uh, do we have other questions? No? Okay.